right, so uh, this week I am, my son uh, asked me to do a electrical video because he's in the Marine Technical Institute and he's uh, getting his electrical certification this year in Marine uh, Electrical and then next year he'll get his mechanical certification for Marine Mechanical. Um, so he asked me if, uh, he said, Dad, you should do a, a walkthrough of your electrical system. So I decided to combine that with my electric motor install. So this video today, I'm going to kind of walk through all my electrical and my electric motor install. So that's what I'm doing today. So when I decided uh, to rewire this boat, it was in just horrible shape. The, the wiring was just a jumbled mess of wires uh, where the bus bars are now. And they were all old wires. You know, the boat's from 1977. And I think over the years, it had never been rewired. They had just added on different things and just kind of tacked them onto other things, uh, which is what you do, you know, when you when you have a boat that's old, especially, and you're just trying to get a new piece of equipment running, you just kind of find a bus bar and, and uh, a fuse that matches and just put it into that. Uh, so, you know, I understand I'm not bad mouthing the former owners or anything. I totally understand how that happens. So, uh, it was just easier for me to rewire the entire boat than try to trace all that down. And I knew that I was going electric with the motor anyway, so I wanted to make sure that I had a very robust electrical system. So, I upsized all my wires uh, for everything. Uh, it cost me a little more money, but where I would normally have used, say, a 16 gauge, you know, wire, I used a 14 or where I was normally would have used a 14 gauge wire, I used 12 gauge. And uh, then in the, in the big motor system, I pretty much did all of that stuff with one AWG wire. Um, I mean, some of them I didn't. I, Battleborn told me the size that I needed to do and, and that's what I went with. I was very careful to, not being a, a, an electrician, I didn't want to do this without any advice from people who knew what they were talking about. So I had two marine electricians that came with me. Um, they did not help me install any of it. I installed it all, but they helped me draw up my electrical plan for the boat. And then uh, they would come and check my work and make sure that I did everything right. Um, so there were a few things that I did that perhaps were uh, not what I would have preferred to do. I used these little uh, night switches. I was, I would have preferred to have all breakers here, but this little North Sea, first of all, this electrical panel, I wanted to keep it. It's in a nice spot and it's very small and it actually, it backs up against the cockpit itself. So there's no room behind it and there's no room down here. This goes, this is the actual cockpit wall right here and through here. So I couldn't do anything here with electrical, um, especially since I wanted to keep my gimbaled stove and all of that. So I pretty much wanted to keep it all in this corner, pretty much, other than a few that are at the nav station that I'll talk about. So my 12 volt system, I have cabin lights, running lights, tricolor light and anchor light all on the, on the top row. And then spreader lights, the autopilot, which is my tiller pilot actually, my refrigerator and an electrical water pump that I added on the second row. And then on the third row, I have all the fans for the boat, the depth sounder, my 12 volt DC charging, which has one DC charger in the aft cabin. And then it goes to a bank of DC uh, back here at the nav station that I'll show you. And then I have the chart plotter there as well. And the chart plotter is just all that is because I use my phones and iPads and whatnot. All that is is a 12 volt outdoor 
charging station in the cockpit right on the other side right over here um, and then here I have the LPG gas alarm that has to be turned on before you get power down here to the Trident LPG system which I also installed all of that it's all brand new and uh, I also installed three alarms for that system one here one in the aft cabin on the way out and one down here in the bilge so there are three alarms for the LPG. And of course, when I use the LPG, I turn it on at the source and off at the source. And I actually will leave the stove running when I go out, it'll be burning, and I go out and turn it off out there, and that way it burns up everything in the line as well. Then I added uh, this little, I call it the alien light. <laughs> this is this little light that goes under here that lights up different colors uh, as I, you know, whatever my mood is and of course at night I can turn that red and that little light little uh, LED light draws almost nothing so that'll be the one that I use mostly uh, when I'm offshore at night uh, so so that's the the DC system mostly then I had some breakers that I put in for some specific things. Uh, the blower breaker is right here. That's for the engine room blower. And then this is the bilge pump, the electric bilge pump uh, right here. And that's on its own and it's wired directly to the battery, to the 12 volt battery. So it, it bypasses everything. It goes through a fuse. No, no it does not. It only goes through this breaker. So it wires directly to it. Um, it also has a switch down in the in the uh, bilge that will kick it on uh, if at high water. And I also have a high water alarm, which is right here. That's my high water alarm, bilge alarm, and it's down in there as well. And then the other 12 volt stuff that I have, I have a, oh, I, haven't, I haven't finished wiring the water maker yet, but there is another breaker for the water maker that will go right here. And it's just another 12 volt breaker. Uh, it'll have its own little breaker switch right there. And then the other things come into here. The other 12 volt stuff comes into this little cabinet right here. And there are, at this point, I have four breakers up here. This is the 12 volt. When I turn on 12 volt charging, it turns on this bank of 12 volt uh, chargers right here. So I can, I can charge up everything I have from this spot on the boat. And of course I have the two charger spots in the cockpit as well and one in the aft cabin. That all goes to this uh, 12 volt charging. Then there is uh, my AIS, which is my Vesper AIS right here. That's on its own breaker. I have my radar, my uh, Faruna Watchmate radar right here at the nav station, and it's on its own breaker. Then I have the single sideband radio, which is this radio here. That's also, it has its own uh, spot. And then the VHF radio right there. I also have a antenna splitter in this little cabinet back here uh, that, that you, so the VHF and the AIS go into this powered splitter that it's directly hooked into the VHF uh, switch as well. So when I flip on uh, the VHF switch and the AIS switch, which are on all the time when I'm sailing, uh, that powers the splitter, which gives me the charge that I need. And uh, well, I mean, I won't leave it out. I have my little Bose uh, stereo speaker. That's the only, I got rid of the stereo that was on the boat and whatnot. And, and this is now all I have, that and my headset, which I don't use a headset when I'm sailing, but uh, you know, I have it anyway. Then I have the two fans, one here and one here, and one in the aft cabin. And um, what else is 12 volts? I think that's it. And then I have my little alien light back here as well, which is controlled right here with this little guy. Uh, so I can change colors on that as well. Eventually I'm going to wire into that uh, 
LED lights that come down the sides uh, of the cock of the um, salon area as well. So that's all of my 12 volts system. Now, I also have a Victron Multi Plus 2 inverter charger. That's a 2500 watt inverter, I believe. And it is also wired into my 12 volt battery bank. And it powers all of my AC loads. So I have one here at the, oh, well, let's, let's start down here. So I have my AC panel right down here. The AC panel is down here, even though I didn't really want it under the companionway. Uh, and I'm gonna put a little thing across here with, uh, uh, and Velcro here with a little um, piece of canvas that will go over all of this and both the engine switch and the house switch. Uh, at, that's something I'll be adding as well as my, um, as Kevin pointed out, which I already knew, uh, I'm also putting a gasket around my battery box for the lid. Uh, that's Those are things that I still have to do with the electrical system, sort of. Uh, anyway, it's a good spot for it because it goes right through into the uh, engine compartment, so it was very easy to wire it up with uh, my Multi Plus. Uh, so on it, I have, this is my main uh, 30 amp uh, panel. Then I have the galley so my switch. Main cabin outlets, that's right here. There's only one, and that's this one right here. And it is, right now what's plugged into it is my um, Milwaukee charger for my Mil or, uh, all of my Milwaukee tools uh, for the batteries for them. And I just leave it there. It's a good spot, and I use those all the time. So, you know, that's it. Uh, and then I have my little air fryer, which is also plugged into that. Uh, I also have an induction cooktop that I store down here. And it, it's just a small induction cooktop that I can put up here, plug it into the galley plug when I have lots of power, and I can use uh, electric uh, or to heat up my food and whatnot. Um, then the other outlets, oh, the other outlet is for the nav station. It's called accessory on my AC panel, and it goes to this plug right in here. And that plug plugs into this pure sine wave uh, surge protector right here, which I flip this switch on. That's a powered, uh, it doesn't draw a lot, but it's it, it guarantees that you're not going to fry any uh, computers or whatnot. Even though I have that multi-plus I like this extra security. Plus it gives me, you know, a total of eight plugs if I wanted to use it. So, and then there's also a, a, a plug in the aft cabin, a AC plug in the aft cabin. It's called aft cabin outlets. The bottom switch right here that's red is, and, and called battery charger, that's actually for my uh, 48 volt charger. It comes through the multi plus so I can plug in the boat uh, shore power which goes through the multi plus and then the multi plus has a uh, the capability for wire to if you're plugged in it can just power through without using the inverter and so it goes through that to here so I can flip it on then that turns on my 48 volt bank uh, charger, my uh, Max Q charger. So it uh, it also can be unplugged from that the the 48 volt charger, and I can plug it directly into the generator if I choose to, because this switch actually powers that back plug right back there in the corner, and that plug, that's all that really does is power that plug which is my uh, charger for my 48 volt system is right here, and it's plugged into that. But I can unplug it from that and plug it directly into the generator if I choose to. Uh, I don't know why I would want to do that, but I thought it would, it would be a nice option. So 
Now let's go to my 12 volt battery bank. For my 12 volt battery bank, I have two Battleborn lithium phosphate batteries. They're 100 amp hour batteries each and they're wired in parallel. And that gives me a 200 amp hour battery bank in lithium for all of my house bank. It goes into this crazy stuff. So what I've got here is I've got this smart dongle. That's actually for the inverter. That tells me the state of everything with the inverter on my phone. I can look at this on my phone and it tells me everything I need to know about the inverter. And then uh, this is the main uh, bus switch uh, from the, t the uh, from the 12 volt bank back to the to the uh, main switch bank, and that's that's that. Then I have uh, coming in from the MultiPlus. This big wire right here comes in from the MultiPlus, and it goes through a 300 amp fuse. That's what Battleborn said that I needed, uh, and apparently that MultiPlus puts out just a ton of electricity to charge these batteries. And so that's the main fuse from the MultiPlus when I'm plugged into shore power or a generator. Uh, it's, that's where the charge comes from that. Then uh, this is a, and it's, it, the, it's tripped on purpose right now. This is a DC to DC fuse. My DC 48 volt uh, DC to DC charger is that little Victron right there. And it takes the 48 volt bank and dumps it right into, through this uh, fuse and into here to charge up my 12 volt bank from my 48 volt bank if I ever want to do that. This is my smart shunt for my 12 volt system. Uh, it's on the negative side, obviously. So all everything going out of the uh, batteries to my negative buses is right here. And this is read through Bluetooth on my phone as well through the Victron site. This little switch or this little fuse right here goes to my my little uh, high water alarm. And it's also wired directly to the batteries like the bilge pump. Both of the bilge pump and the high water alarm are wired directly to the batteries. So that's the 12 volt system. Here's the 12 volt uh, switch, main switch. The house bank and this is the engine switch for the 48 volt system this when i turn this on it powers the 48 volt system so let's discuss the 48 volt battery banks on the starboard side on this side i have four identical by the way all of these lithium batteries from battleborn were from the same uh pallet they they sent me exactly the same so they're all they were all the right uh, from the right batch. Uh, that's important with lithium especially. And then I charged them all up individually before I installed them and, and wired them together. So on this side, I have four 100 amp hour lithium phosphate Battleborn batteries and they are wired in series to 48 volts. So this is one 48 volt bank. At, at 48 volts, it has 100 amp hours on this side. Then on this side, they are configured a little differently because of the, the way this side was set up. I had to kind of stair-step them up. I would have preferred to do both sides the same as this. It was a little easier wiring. But uh, this is exactly the same uh, duplicate bank from the other side. So the port bank is the same 100 amp hours at 48 volts. This is my Delta Q charger for my 48 volt bank. And my electric yacht motor and my multi plus compact inverter i guess it's at 2000 not 2500 and then i have solar uh, victron solar controllers which the solar isn't hooked up i'll do another video on the solar once i get it up uh once it's in the water uh that's my dc to dc victron and here is the guts of the 48 volt system right here so this is a fuse that goes from uh, my 
uh, 48 volt charger. It goes through this fuse to the charging side. And then there's a, a relay right here that goes up to the motor. It has a plug that goes up to the motor that reads all of the different charge sources that are coming in. So when I, when I hook up my uh, solar, they will also be hooked up to this same spot right here uh, as well for the 48 volt uh, solar. Then uh, this is my main motor fuse. Notice I labeled everything really nice too. So this is the main uh, motor fuse here. And this is the negative shunt for, and it's also a Victron uh, shunt that I can read from my uh, phone as well, or my iPad. So uh, that that's about it. All right, we are unloading the Battleborn batteries for MIG. 10 lithium phosphate batteries. Well, thank you very much. All right, we're opening her up. Woo, look at this. Awesome. MIG's heart, right? This is the beating heart of MIG. Woo. Love it. I'm, I'm a little distracted. I wonder how they're all gonna fit. They'll fit. So we're gonna do a little inventory of all this stuff. Look at that, there she is. Can you zoom in on that? There's one of them right there. Right on, what do you think, Ben? I think it's gonna work out. Turn around so I can see your smiling face. Uh, all right. It's yeah, man? Work. Yeah. Yeah. So this morning I have unboxed my electric yacht engine and I'm getting ready to put it on the boat. I'm not ready to do the electrical for it yet, but I needed to install the engine itself in its correct spot so that I know where to put my inverter charger. I have the Victron inverter and I need it to be installed for the 12 volt system. So this is gonna be the next big thing, I guess. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool to get it out, have a look at it been sitting here for a few months. I am in the midst of installing the electric engine. I had to remove my MultiPlus inverter, which I had very painstakingly installed on this wall because obviously in order to get the motor in here mounted properly, uh, and aligned right. I didn't have room to do it with the uh, MultiPlus there. I am uh, choosing to believe that once the motor is installed, I will be able to reinstall the MultiPlus in that spot. However, I am not 100% certain that I'm going to be able to do that either. Uh, not that it won't fit. I know that it will fit. I did measure it. I just don't know that I will have the ability to hook everything up once it's in there. So that's my issue. Um, the worst case scenario, I can make my wires long enough that I can pull it up through this access here uh, when I need to service it and without, un without undoing all of the connections. However, uh, I do not want to rerun those big uh, wires if I don't have to. So uh, I'll keep you updated as I go here. I am not recording this as I do it because I'm not that talented. So I will just show you it as it progresses. So I needed a little bit of a break here. I'm in the midst of bolting down those motor mounts right there. And it occurred to me that I can put the other piece right here for the engine motor, sorry, for the electric motor 
onto those and bolt them down and then I can still put my multi plus in at that point it just makes it a little harder to install the motor onto those mounts uh, because I have to I have to support it from below in order to get the bolts in the right spot to tighten them down but I think that's easier than trying to do the multi plus after the whole motors in there so I'm almost to the point now where I can put this thing back together and then I can put the multi plus back in wire it up test it and make sure everything's running on it first before I then mount the motor to the motor mounts once the motors in there I'm done for today I will feel satisfied today then tomorrow I will hook up the Sigma drive to the shaft and then the next day I will wire the motor and every all the other things that I need to do with that and I'll make a video well I'll make little videos of all of this and then I will uh, include that in my electric motor video that I'm gonna do so that's where I'm at right now I'm uh, I'm feeling okay about this I'm feeling like my measurements they were right once we get this all tightened down I'm gonna recheck my measurements and make sure they're still the same you know just drilling a hole and then bolting stuff down move stuff a little bit but I think I'll be good so I'll let you know I am installing my Sigma drive because my motor alignment in order to fit this particular motor to these mounts uh, it wasn't quite exactly straight so I got a Sigma drive which is like a CV joint and it has a ball in there that allows three degrees of play either way and it smooths everything out so <laughs> I've been doing this for a little bit here I should have recorded it from the beginning but so this little taper right here taper lock goes up onto the shaft and you measure up to the right amount for this particular one inch shaft it was uh 30 millimeters between 25 and 30 millimeters uh no more than 30 no less than 25 so i got it up to tw uh to, to 30 millimeters onto the shaft and it's just a, a little taper sleeve and then it fits into the ball housing right in here um then you put these studs on the back and with Loctite, stung them down, and then I will uh, put nylocks on each of those, and that attaches it to the uh, transmission. And now I have to tighten each one of these just like you would lugs on a car. So one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, and you tighten them evenly all the way down, and then you have to uh, torque them to the right amount. And uh, then it should be done. That should be it. And believe it or not, there was quite a bit of uh, difference in the shaft from the motor here, and you can't really tell, but uh, it should take care of all that so I don't have to add new stringers, which is what I would have had to do. If you look, I don't have any play either side on this, uh, so I can't adjust the motor side to side any more than it already is. So that was as close as I could get. And I think it's going to work. If not, I'm going to have to pull the whole thing out, including the inverter again. And then I'm going to have to add on new uh, motor stringers and then redo all of this again. So I'm really hoping that this Sigma drive, which is a nice piece of kit anyway, will take care of that and everything will move smoothly. So let's see. Uh, let's see how it goes. I'm not going to try to film while I do this. I am laying down on my belly half into the engine compartment in order to do this anyway. So there we have it. I'll let you see it when I'm done with the full installation. So I've run the little cord, I hooked it up right here, ran it back through there, and then I it came out right here, and then I ran it back down, and now it is in there, but I've got to go into the aft cabin in order to 
just make sure that it, before I hook it up to the motor that it is completely run the right way and not out, you know, not in the way of other stuff and whatnot. So I'm going to head out there now. And of course, it's a rainy day. Rainy days. Oh my gosh. Going down, going down. Like my hat. Oh, let's close that. So I'm getting rain down here. And it's gonna be all in the wrong spot for hoses. I've got hoses back here. And see, I wanna run it down. I wanna run it down with this stuff. And then I wanna run it over with that stuff without it getting caught. So it's gonna go down now right here. So I think, I think I'm good now to switch back to the other area. Oh man, this is a small area. I mean, it's nice to have this, but you know, it's kind of a, one of those kind of pain in the butt things. Okay. When you're working in there, it really is kind of a pain in the butt. I was gonna say, fortunately you don't have to work in there very often, but I think that that is a bit of a misnomer uh, because I probably will have to work in there just knowing boats the way I do. Okay, so I'm gonna close this up now because I don't believe that I have to do anything more with this. Today, anyway. I think that this is, this is done. Okay, so now here's my, here's my little cord and I am gonna run it right along that stuff and down to right here and it plugs into this one. So, then I can take that extra coil and I can coil it up up there and uh, tie it off with some pull ties. And then that one is hooked up. Then I need to do the one for the throttle. And since the throttle is located right here alongside it, that should be pretty easy. So, all right. All right. My son Caleb is here. This is the moment of truth. We, I have finished wiring up the motor and I'm about to test it for the very first time. Um, so I can see from the monitor, uh, it's probably got a glare on it. There we go. Put on. I've got 53 volts, which with lithium phosphate batteries at 48 volt system, that should be correct. And here's my throttle. And here is the motor and shaft and everything. And I have the Sigma drive. If it turns nice and smooth, then we're golden. Here we go. You guys get to see it first. She's turning. Does it look smooth? Oh my gosh, it looks perfectly smooth. Perfectly smooth. Quiet as shit. Okay. All right, uh, let's see if it works in reverse. Whoa, calm down. Awesome, oh my gosh. Okay, Caleb. Caleb, head on down and check the, check the prop and see if it's turning the right direction. Caleb is in Marine Technical Institute right now, so, and he just did props, so he'll be able to tell me if it's turning the right direction or if I have it screwed up. Don't turn it on. I won't till you say so. 
This is pretty exciting. You ready? Make sure it's nice and smooth too. Okay. Oh, actually, Caleb, yeah. here. I'm gonna hand you this camera. You film what you're seeing down there for these guys. Okay. The screen might turn off, but it's still on. It's recording. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Going forward. Okay, stop it. Just want to make sure this is going the right direction. That was in forward. Yeah, that's the right direction. Okay, let me put it in reverse, see how it looks. Is it nice and smooth? Yeah. Looks good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Caleb seems surprised. <laughs> His old man, come on up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch places with you. I wanna see the prop turn. I'm a little surprised that your old man actually did it right. I'm more surprised by how powerful that thing is. Okay, so come on in and I'll show you how this works. When you're not plugged into short power, is that just gonna suck your back? No, no, I just turn it all off. All right, uh, so Caleb, here's how this works. You push in this button, it's locked right now, see? So you push the button in and then slide it forward and just barely, yeah. watch. I mean, just barely it starts humming, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna go down and uh, check out the prop myself now. You guys have no idea how exciting this is when you do something like this yourself. Like I did the whole damn thing, the whole wiring, everything. And uh, to have it then work, <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised. All right, Caleb, put it in forward. Gosh. Okay, stop. Reverse. Woo! All right, that's it. You guys, can you please comment and wish me congratulations. It's uh, it's a big deal. Thanks a lot for watching.